The lip of truth shall be established forever, but a lying tongue is but for a moment. Call hello, Yahweh, Barsham Yahushai, Barsham Rakakwadash. Double honors unto the apostles and elders of Great Millstone who do rule well. Shalom to you of us who are hopeful. Shalom to the elect. Now, the video excerpt I'm about to play you is from the Go Black to Africa channel on YouTube for those of you. Late to the supper table, I'll remind you that as Israelites, we don't subscribe to being called anything African, as African means you are of the lineage of Noah's son, Ham, father of Canaan, progenitor of the Canaanites. And we Israelites are of the lineage of Noah's son, Shem. Outside of the scriptures, a clear distinction and definition between the two can be found in the Zondervan Compact, as well as the Young's Compact Bible Dictionaries. I'll put the definitions of both up on the screen in a in post here this is the pure fact that the lying tongue of esau edom has tried to hide from the so-called people of color the color of your skin does not determine your nationality there is no such thing as black or white people black and white are social constructs meant to blind and divide we true israelites furthermore in no way do we subscribe to being called black as it is a negative connotation that suggests we are evil wicked dark in countenance black also equating to being void of any light light being the knowledge wisdom and understanding of truth that being said the uh, brother's research regarding the books and maps that he goes into in his video is undeniable providing an insurmountable amount of evidence proving the negroes of the transatlantic slave trade are in fact the true jews properly the true hebrew israelites of the holy holy meaning pure and set apart bible i.e. the pure word of God, whose true name is not God, it is Yahweh. For those of you who do your due diligence and research, some of the books mentioned will be available for download on my website. And the link to the full video, I'll add that to the uh, description box. Ayla Adabar in, in advance. I'm going to leave you with just one scripture and, and then we'll play the excerpt here. And it's John 8 and 32. And it says this, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. The truth not only being the lies of white supremacy we continue to expose through the power and spirit. The truth is the scriptures and the understanding we men of the Lord who were chosen from on high to reveal to those who have eyes to see and ears to hear. Call halal Yahweh Bashem Yahshai Bashem Rakakodash. All praises to the Heavenly Father Yahweh in the name of His Son Yahweh Shai, in the name of the set apart spirit. Shalom, Yasharala. Shalom to the elect. The discovery of the Gold Coast served, indeed, yet more to enlarge the sphere of the navigation of the Portuguese than their slave trade, but it forced them also to extend themselves on the coast and to settle colonies in Congo, Angola, and other places which they had till then neglected. Prince Henry's colonies were enlarged by his successors. King John II, in 1492, expelled all Jews to the island of St. Thomas, Sao Tome, which had been discovered in 1471 and to other Portuguese settlements on the continent of Africa. And from, they, and from these banished Jews, the black Portuguese, as they are called, and the Jews in Leongo, who are despised even by the very Negroes, are descended. The Hibernian Magazine, or the Compendium of Entertaining Knowledge. When was this published? We're going to see 1784, 1784, the New York Public Library, All right? The discovery of the Gold Coast served indeed yet more to enlarge the sphere of the navigation of the Portuguese than their slave trade. But it forced them also to extend themselves on the coast and to settle colonies in Congo, Angola and other places which they had till then neglected. Prince Henry's colonies were enlarged by his successors, King John II in 1492 expelled all Jews to the island of St. Thomas, Sao Tome, which had been discovered in 1471 and to other Portuguese settlements on the continent of Africa. And from, they, and from these banished Jews, the black Portuguese, as they are called, and the Jews in Leongo, who are despised even by the very Negroes, are descended. By these colonists, 
St. Thomas soon became a considerable place of trade and valuable for its sugar plantations. Valuable for its sugar plantations. Isn't that what we just read? That these Jews that were dropped off here, these Portuguese, um, these people that were deported by the Portuguese, they were they had a thriving sugar production. It says the climate proved extremely unwholesome for Europeans. The other document said they were stripped naked and left with alligators and other beasts of prey. This one right here is the first time that I'm showing you that we see that they are black. It says that they are black Jews. Again, published in 1784. These are black Jews. Now, they, they will try to say, we're reading this out of context and black might not mean black. Okay, so let's keep going. Let's look at another source. Yeah, I'd actually, um, like I said, this is my third time, I think, recording this. So, yeah, it was open a couple times. So now let's go to 1851, a treatise on physical geography comprising hydrology, geognosy, geology, meteorology, botany, zoology, and anthropology. But I'm showing you guys piece by piece. We know that there was a place called Jude on the west coast of Africa. We know that they called it that because one of the tribes was the tribes were believed to be there. And now we see that they are called Portuguese. The, the Portuguese Jews were called black Jews. So now. We'll come down to here. We need go no further. This is hold on, let me give you this right here. Again, a treatise on physical geography published 1851. See what other information we can find and Northwestern University. This is where they got the original from Northwestern University, 1851. So now when these urban apologists keep telling you that they debunked all this stuff, make them show you the receipts, make them show you a video or, or a peer review paper showing they debunked this document from Northwestern University. So right here, we need go no further than the Jews of Southern Spain. Remember the Jews from Spain went into Portugal and compare them with those of Holland and Northern Germany to perceive a very striking difference. The Spanish Jew is always dark complexion and his hair is uniformly black whilst the German Jew is often as fair as any German and has light or red hair with blue eyes. The various shades of color observable among the Negro or African race tends to the same conclusion. Along the coast of Guinea, which is low, marshy and hot, we find jet black complexions and this is the very country from which American Negroes have been derived. Again, the various shades of color observable among the Negroes or African race tends to the same conclusion. Along the coast of Guinea, which is the low marshy and hot, which is low, marshy and hot, we find jet black complexions and this is the very country from which the American Negroes have derived. They're talking about the western coast of Africa where they put those black Jews. Now, this is from Hannah Adams. Now, that is the picture I had up when we first started and I said we'd come back to it. So let me pull up Hannah Adams again. Hannah Adams is this lady right here. This lady right here. So now, we're going to talk about Hannah Adams because they claim that we're making this history up. So now we know the Portuguese Jews are black. We verified that in two sources. It's going to be more. It's going to be more to come. We know that the Portuguese Jews are connected to West Africa. Let's see here. Okay, here we go. So now she has her book. I'm going to read this in two parts. So her book, you read the regular page and it continues just like a regular book. But then in the notes section, when you read it, it continues over to the... Um, Next page, almost like a, a tiny book within her book. So first I'm going to read the main part and then I'm going to come back and read the notes. So right here, the Spanish and Portuguese Jews claim their descent from the tribe of Judah. So now all this stuff is connected. So the people on the west coast of Africa call Judah or a Judah or Wida or Wida are connected. They were believed to be Jews. We've seen that from a French source and a non-French source. I believe it was an English source. We see that. We see that they are black. We see that they were deported from Portugal because they fled from Spain. Now, the Spanish and Portuguese Jews claim their descent from the tribe of Judah. Now we're getting down to specific tribes. 
we're getting down to a specific tribe here and found these pretensions on a supposition which prevails among them that many of their ancestors removed or were sent into Spain at the time of the Babylonian captivity. In consequence of this supposed superiority, they till very lately would not by intermarriage or otherwise incorporate with their brethren of other nations. They had separate synagogues. And if a Portuguese Jew, even in England or Holland, married a German Jewess, he was immediately expelled from the synagogue, deprived of every civil and ecclesiastical right, and ejected from the body of the nation. A late instance has occurred of a Jew in Berlin, this is Germany, who having married the daughter of a Portuguese physician, the parents of the girl went into mourning as for the death of a relation. The manner of the Portuguese Jews differ from the rest of the nation and are more polished. They have nothing peculiar in their dress. The opulent among them vie with the other nations of European of Europe in refinement, elegance and show, and they differ from them in worship only. In Portugal, the name of a Jew is a term of such high reproach that the government found it necessary to enact a law which forbade any person to call another by that appellation. If a man who is styled a Jew to his face stabs the offender, the law does not condemn him. And trifling as this regulation may appear, it has produced beneficial effects. So now, the name Jew was outlawed to the point that if you called someone a Jew, they could stab you and not be held guilty. Yale is a university. This map is from 1774 Yale. So the first thing I'm going to show you, because her and Damon Richardson lied and said Judah wasn't on the west coast of Africa. It wasn't named after them. Um, so the first thing I'm going to show you is a map from 1774. This is Africa performed by the senior Danville under the patronage of the Duke of Orleans, revised and improved by Mr. Bolden and E. Bowen. Emmanuel Bowen is the one who made the map that we see the most. Um, I believe it's the 1747 map. We see that the most because it's part of his famous collection in which it shows Judah on the west coast of Africa, the kingdom of Judah. And they say that that map has been debunked. But here, Emmanuel Bowen works on another map that they claim that remember, they, they will tell you that they've debunked a lot of the Israelite evidence. Yet they don't touch this map right here. 1774, another map Emmanuel Bowen worked on for the Duke of Orleans. We're going to look at this map bigger. Still, you see library.yale.edu. This map has been enlarged already because it's such a large file. It takes a few seconds to get bigger. So Negritia. Now, remember, she said we misinterpret this evidence. We make this evidence up, right? Now, I'm going to build a case. I'm going to slowly build this case up because I want you to see how thoroughly and, and how much information there is for her to sit there and lie and say this information outright does not exist. So right here, according to Idrisi, the land hereabout was peopled by Jews. According to Idrisi, the land hereabout was peopled by Jews. This is the west coast of Africa. You can see this right here. This is the area I'm looking in right here where the yellow box is. This is the area, Lamlin, right here. Now we come down here and read this square right here. It says, all Negritia, from the head of the Sanaga is very little known, but the situation of this great region as described by Ptolemy joined with the knowledge of Idrisi, the Nubian geographer, and Leo the African agrees with several new discoveries, all uniting to verify their accounts. I therefore conclude that the Niger flows from west to east and has an affinity with the Sanaga or has no affinity with the Sanaga or any part thereof, but falls into the lakes that communicate with the River Nile. So now, he's talking about the Niger River. The Niger River is going to come up again, and that's why I read that. So now, this area right here is peopled by Jews. The Niger River is mentioned here. You see the kingdom of Dahomey, whose prince subdued the states of Ardra and Wida. W-I-D-A. Pay attention to the spelling. About the year 1724, you see Ardra here. You see Wida here on the slave coast. Ardra, Wida. Remember Wida. W-I-D-A. So now this map, all these links will be in the description to the maps and everything else. So now right here, this is a French website, gallica.bnf.fr. This is a French website. This is from 1890, May 1st, 1890. So we go down to here. Um, let me make sure. All right, text. Now I'm going to copy part of this text, right? Witta, 
Vita. We're going to get grab this right here. Now, their whole point was we're going to come back to this. I'm going to pull her up again. Their whole point was that we or or Wida was not named after the tribe of Judah. So now what I'm going to do is a French to English translation and I'm going to paste the text into here that I just copied. Now, according to Google Translate, you see me do this right here. Weta, Fida, Weta, Awida, Judah, or Ajuda is a city old, frequented since the 16th century by Portuguese slavers. These, this word is split up, but it's supposed to be Portuguese. Portuguese slavers who gave it its name. Its inhabitants were said to be Judoques, and they were indeed considered to be a remnant of scattered tribes of Israel to the north, the Alala River, who, whose real name is Ephra, had become Euphrates for scholars. So now it says they were indeed considered to be a remnant of scattered tribes of Israel. So now we are establishing that this land called Weda or Wida contained people who were said to be this one of the scattered tribes of Israel. Right. This is in this French document right here on bnf or gallica.bnf.fr this is from france i'll give you guys the link this is from bulletin society um i'm not gonna try to pronounce all this geography and again this is from 1890 so now we still haven't tied it to us though we we've just shown that yes there is a place in west africa named after judah it is said that the jew or, or a tribe lived there one of the tribes of israel was there so now let's see if we can find any consistency in this. So now the Jews of Spain and Portugal and the Inquisition. This is published in 1877 by Princeton Theological Seminary. So when you hear these urban apologists saying they debunked the Israelite sources, ask them to show you the video or documentation of them debunking this source from Princeton Theological Seminary. Ask them to show you the source or, or the video of them debunking the map from Yale. Ask them to show you these things because they keep making these claims. So anyway, the Jews of Spain and Portugal, we're on page 68 of 148. The link will be in the description for you to read yourself. You can see it's not a screenshot. This is the whole book. If I do this, the page will turn. All right. Thus was Spain deprived of her large Jewish population. The synagogues were purified and used as Christian churches. The vast sums of money which were owed to the Jews and the still larger amounts which they were forced to leave behind them found their way partly into the hands of their debtors or still more into those of the sovereign. The chief professors of medicine were sent out of the country to the terrible inconvenience of the population and trade into, I'm sorry, to the terrible inconvenience of the population and trade and industry languished till they almost died out. Unfortunately, at the time of the expulsion, the plague was raging in Castile and the fugitives brought with them the disease propagating it wherever they went and not unnaturally causing their advent to be viewed with loathing and horror. This circumstance induced King John to hasten their departure from Portugal for which purpose ships were duly provided according to the agreement. But such was the temper of the captains and sailors that they subjected the Jews to the hardest possible conditions. They plundered them of their goods and valuables even to their very clothes and landed them naked and bare of everything on barren port points of the African coast, leaving them to die of starvation or to be sold into slavery to the Moors. Nor was this all. The king wrested from their parents all children from between the ages of three and ten of those Jewish immigrants whom, who from poverty or otherwise had omitted to pay the capitation tax on entering or who were forced to remain in Portugal and had them transported to the newly discovered islands of St. Thomas, which is the same as Sao Tome, which then swarmed with alligators and other beasts of prey to be brought up as Christians. So he's telling you, <clears throat> excuse me, the Jews were deported out of Portugal because they didn't pay the tax and they had their children stripped away and sent to this island where there were alligators and other beasts of prey. This is another Source from Princeton Theological Seminary, published 1882, The Earth and Its Inhabitants. Right here, page 320 of 628. The link will be in the description. East of Great Popo begins the Dahomey Territory, guarded by the important town of Glewe, 
known to Europeans by the various names of Fida, Hasida, Wida, or Wida, W-I-D-A. I told you to remember that because of the map. W-I-D-A, W-I-D-A, same place. It's important to establish this so the urban apologists can't wiggle their way out of anything. Same place. So let me get back. The old writers called it Judah. So now we know why the uh, 1747 Emmanuel Bowen map says Judah. Now we know why this one says Wida. It says, and its inhabitants were said to be Jews. While the neighboring river Alala, whose real name is Ephra, became the Euphrates. Didn't we just read that? In the French source that they were believed to be a tribe of Israel so now we have two different sources here two different sources let me see here all right so now I was gonna um, so anyway this was published 1882 two different sources the other one was published 1890 so this one predates that source by eight years eight years so we have two sources saying that these are definitely Judah and it says during the flourishing days of the slave trade from 16 to 18,000 were annually transported from a Judah as the Portuguese called this place which at the time had a population of 35,000 the titular deity of Wida is the snake and the famous fetish temple is served by priestesses called mothers or sisters of serpents and recruited by the abduction of young girls on feast days so some of them will tell you that it couldn't have been Israel because they worshiped a snake. And I would encourage you to go look up Nehushtan in the Bible. It was the brass serpent that Moses made that they began to worship. So snake worship isn't outside of um, Israel's um, history. But understand here, the Portuguese were calling them this. Why were the Portuguese calling them this? Because the Portuguese were the ones deporting Jews to West Africa. So, of course, they called it Judah. So now we still haven't dis established anything specific as to whether they were black or European. So let's continue. This book right here, brown.edu. So when the when the urban apologists come and say they debunked our sources, make sure you get the get the um, receipts that they brought debunked this document from brown.edu. Portuguese exploration to the west and the formation of Brazil, 1450 to 1800. So I went ahead and went down to page 17, brown.edu. You want to go down to page 17. You want to go to point 14 right here. Now listen to what happened to these people. And you tell me if you believe that European children did this. Just tell me if you think this makes sense. Happening off the west coast of Africa where we just read that there were alligators and other beasts of prey. It says, by the year 1470, the Portuguese had found the equatorial island of Sao Tome. That's the same as St. Thomas in the Ghanaian Gulf off the African coast. The climate proved to be extremely unwholesome for Europeans, extremely unwholesome for Europeans, and settlement was slow. The official chronicler of King Zhao II, that's King John, Garcia de Rezin, reports on one of the methods to populate this island that also throws some light on a tragic form of Jewish participation in the Portuguese Atlantic Empire. The king had allowed Jewish refugees from Spain from where they had been expelled in 1492, notice the consistency, she said we, we misinterpret history, to remain in Portugal only in return for payment of an enormous ransom. In 1493, those who could not pay had their children taken away from them, baptized by force, and deported to Sao Tome in order to be raised as Christians and to help populate the island that the king had just leased to Alvaro de Camina at the annual rent of 100,000 reis. Mm -hmm. Nothing is known of their further fate, although later chroniclers attribute the thriving sugar production on the island to the talents of those deported children and their offspring. So now she wants you to believe that white people were stripped butt naked, thrown in West Africa with alligators, beasts of prey, white children, and somehow survived to develop a thriving sugar economy. This is what the urban apologists want you to believe. Yeah.